Happy Monday, everybody. It is November 30th, meaning tomorrow is December 1st. So yes, as of tomorrow, the intention is to kind of Christmas this room up a bit. The lights on in the ceiling technically are not Christmas lights. They're LED lights that you can use. In this. They're the same ones you see in like, you know, car dealerships where they got the LEDs all the way around. It's the same thing. So tomorrow it'll actually look a little Christmassy. I've got a tree coming in, but I know exactly where I'm going to put said tree. And it's it, it's going to be different. So look forward to that. And Yvonne even made a bunch of ornaments for the tree. So uh, it's it's going to be festive starting tomorrow. And we may have something to celebrate. We, we may not. I just don't know. Uh, we'll start off with Matthew Boldy, who had a weekend to celebrate. Goal and three assists in two games. Uh, it's his sophomore year. We'll see whether or not he stays in the NCAA next year or if he turns pro. Again, there's there's reasons why players might want to turn pro, and there's reasons why players would stay in the NCAA as well. And I, I have no ill will to a player that says, I'm going to gonna just see it out and, and get my degree and graduate. I think there's no shame in that whatsoever. It's often a good move, prudent move. Um, so, yeah, kudos to him. He was uh, named Player of the Week, I believe, as well. Um, now, reports have come out, and I, I was looking up at, uh, the information on this, and this is one of those things where... When we get into the negotiations between players and owners, this stuff's going to start coming out the longer those negotiations take. So the reports that we've seen all stem around this whole idea of the owners saying, okay, we're going to claw more money. We have to get more money out of the players. The players going, we already gave up 28% of our income for this coming season. So that was the agreement. You guys signed it. You guys signed it during the summer. It hasn't even been six months and now you guys want to go back reopen the collective bargaining agreement and change it so players not too happy with that idea now the report is that basically gary bettman got the uh, memorandum of understanding all set up and he basically told the owners this is a good deal take it this is a good deal and the owners not happy but here's the thing the owners weren't happy neither were the players the players weren't happy about this either and the players have not been all that overjoyed with the idea of losing 28% of their income off the top, right? And I understand this is 2020. A lot of people are out of work. A lot of people are losing money, but, and nobody's happy about it, players included. So re reports now are coming out that there are some owners who didn't read the memorandum of understanding. They just signed it. So they didn't read what they were signing. That's not really the player's problem. If that's the case and the owners are mad, oh well, you signed it. You signed the agreement and that me memorandum of understanding led to the collective bargaining agreement being extended. And then they read it after and they went, oh, I don't like this. I don't, no, 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 I don't like this. But you signed it. And I'm sure that right over the signature, it was a little checkbox of, I have read and understand what I'm read what I'm signing and if there wasn't, well, I'm surprised the NHL wouldn't have that. But again, it's it's not the player's fault that, that the owners didn't read it. So I, I'm, I'm not sure that I understand the idea of owners now going back after and going, hey, we need to claw more money back. Uh, and and it, it is it is hard for me. And, and again, you know, I've made the argument from both sides because I try to be as down the middle as possible when it comes to this stuff. The owners, in, in my eyes, this is this is petty. This is you didn't you didn't read it. So all right, well you didn't read it. So if you didn't read it, alright. So we'll see what ends up happening there. I think it's just it's gonna go to the last minute and then they're gonna sign something. Um, I agreed with the article I was reading that said it feels like twenty twelve. Twenty twelve it was the owners go to the players and say, Hey, you guys make fifty seven percent of the salary cap or fifty percent fifty seven percent of the revenues go to your salary cap. We want to cut that to 44% and the players went, yeah, whatever. It ended up being a 50-50 split. So odds are what the owners are looking for, they're going to end up having to compromise. And the players are going to have to compromise and then we go back to playing hockey. But it'll probably take until the last moment. One thing to consider as well is that owners, we're talking about prorated seasons. So if they play 48 games, you get paid the percentage of your, your, your money owed because you're not playing 82 games. Players don't like that idea. And the idea that if, if they don't play at all this season, they might owe less money later. But if you're a veteran player, 
then you don't get paid at all. That's the thing. If we don't have a season, players don't make any money. And then the salary cap goes up probably sooner after that. But then you get into, I need an accountant to figure out whether or not I make more money that way or not. And in a lot of cases, the answer is probably going to be no. Now, for players who are coming up for rookies, it's not going to make any difference to them. But for the veterans, it'll make a difference. So it is, it is it is as the article concluded, a mess. Um, Columbus has reopened their facilities. So a lot of teams are already on the ice. They're already practicing. They're already out there figuring this out. And, of course, it was their facilities were closed for two weeks due to positive COVID tests. The players will be retested. That will include a cardiac test as well. So make sure that their, their hearts are okay. And uh, that's that's after all the other testing. So Columbus is reopened. And again, other teams are out there practicing. And testing is going on. So there are still signs that point to the NHL coming back. It's just a matter of figuring out how we're going to make it work. And who gets what money. Because it all ends up coming down to money. Right? It really, really does. Um, Phil Kemp. If you don't know who Phil Kemp is, that's understandable. He was a 2017 seventh round pick. And apparently the Oilers feel they got a steal. This defenseman they feel was an absolute steal for them. So uh, he's been loaned to the Swedish league for the rest of the season. And with the idea of he'll get his, his development time there. And then probably next season he'll come over and play in, I would think, the AHL. And uh, have a chance to, to start his North American part of his pro career. But they're, they're high on this kid, and they think they got an absolute steal late in that draft. So we'll see whether or not Kemp becomes a seventh-round steal. And whether or not it has anything to do with Ken Holland, if the Oilers suddenly are a team that gets late-round steals and Holland's the GM, maybe there's some magic there, right? You know, um, So that's a discussion to have. Uh, the Hockey News has, has released the digital version of their yearbook. I don't have it yet. The one yearbook of theirs that I have is the one that always comes out first, which is the uh, the pool guide, and then their actual yearbook will come out after that. So this is last year's yearbook. This is the one that I used for uh, discussions of Ray Shiro this morning. Um, now, according to their yearbook, they have the Avalanche winning the Cup. It looks like they have Tampa Bay losing to them in the Stanley Cup Final. Uh, and they say that Nathan McKinnon is the best player in the NHL. They have him rated as number one. They have McDavid as number two, Crosby as number three, Dreisaitl at six, uh, Elias Patterson at number eight, uh, which I that if, if they're right, that's fantastic if you're a Canuck fan. They have Seth Jones at 21, so the advanced stats people aren't going to be happy with that. Uh, Horvat at 47 and Zibanejad at 48, which tells me they're trolling the Rangers. I Because again, that's a debate that goes back years as to the, the Horvat, Zibanejad, and the comparisons between the two. And uh, they have Horvat ahead as a vintage ad. So if you're a Rangers fan, don't get mad at me. Get mad at them. I didn't do that. I didn't put Horvat over as a in my in my list of best centers in the NHL either. So I have nothing to do with this. Uh, Horvat was an honorable mention for me. Uh, but this is entertaining, and I'm looking forward to reading it. I'm going to throw in here too, though, and I put the note on the board to make sure I said it. I don't enjoy reading magazines online. There's the, they always push the, get a digital subscription and you can read the magazine online. I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy it on my computer. I don't enjoy it on my phone. I don't. I like, I like having a magazine I can flip through. I, I like that. And I understand that there's environmental reasons and paper and all this stuff. And I've got lots of magazines and yearbooks and whatnot. And I understand that everything's going to move to digital at some point. But I still, I, I like being able to sit and read a magazine. And not needing a screen or an internet connection to do it. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, um, that's how I feel. But let me know what you guys think. Do you just do the, the digital reading online with all of it? Or do you, do you like having the physical magazines and yearbooks? Uh, I know the NHL itself stopped producing the uh, guide and record book a couple of years ago. Which I don't like because I like seeing the career totals of all the players in again in the yearbook form. I know you still have it online. I know it's they've, they've synced it up with the, the record books and everything. But it was still nice to have the guide and record books. I have, I think, about probably five five or six of them uh, over the years. And it, it's nice uh, to have those. But I understand eventually everything's going to go digital. But hey, let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And uh, do look for some kind of news this week when it comes to the NHL and the NHLPA. Because they have to. 
even if it's just to say, so we're not going to make it for January 1st. If they're going to make it for January 1st, they have to get an agreement signed this week. They have to have something moving forward this week due to quarantine rules and everything else. They have to have it this week. If they don't, you can push it back. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.